Good morning. This is Bill from Audi Europa Naples and a lovely Florida Thursday. Well, it's not really that lovely, but I'm not really doing an Audi Europa video today. This is a special video for a friend of mine named Al. And about, oh, I don't know, six months ago, Al bought this Maserati Gran Turismo. Actually, it's a Gran Sport uh, from us uh, because he just absolutely fell in love with it. Unfortunately, he's buying another house, he's got to get his finances straight for that, and the Maserati has to go. So he asked me to run it on Bring a Trailer for him, and uh, that's what we're up to right now, in the midst of a bunch of weed whackers and lawnmower sounds, but hopefully we can get through it without uh, getting too bothered by that. Uh, but anyway, this is a 2006 Maserati Grand Sport. Uh, it was the ultimate incarnation of the Gran Turismo, which started with the 3200 GT in Europe. A uh, very interesting car, very uh, attractive design, although it did have some funky looking taillights. They did improve them by the time this one came out. Ah, oh, the sound of the mowers. <sighs> anyway, 06 was, uh, again, the final year, and uh, they really did get their crap together by the time this car was made. Uh, this also was the rebirth of Maserati in the United States. They had been out for like a 14-year hiatus, and the Gran Turismo was the first car that brought them back. In fact, you might remember Johnny Sack in The Sopranos famously drove a Gran Turismo. And uh, then, uh, of course, after the feds took him out, he had to uh, give it off to Tony's nephew. But uh, anyway... Beautiful design on the car, bulging fenders. Uh, it's uh, designed by a guy or a firm named Gigiaro, uh, a very famous Italian design firm with a uh, significant number of fantastic cars under their belt. In fact, Mr. Gigiaro himself designed uh, one of the early Ferraris when he was just 21 years old, the 250 GT, and uh, other famous Maseratis and some other famous stuff like the first gen Volkswagen Golf, uh, and uh, even the Eagle Premier. So he did have some interesting pieces under his belt. Uh, but this is an absolute masterpiece of Italian design, I think. It just looks muscular, uh, tight together, gorgeous, flowing. And they did want to make a true four-seat grand touring car, which is not that easy to do uh, when you're you know, trying to make something that's very Ferrari-esque. Uh, the reason it is Ferrari-esque is because Ferrari was basically in charge of Maserati uh, when this car was designed and built. So it has a huge number of Ferrari components, uh, Ferrari architecture, uh, right down to the engine itself. So we'll get into that. Uh, the color outside, the metallic gray, is absolutely gorgeous. I, I don't know what it's called in Italian. It's, I'm sure it's something lovely sounding. Uh, even the word for porta potty is probably very pretty in Italian. Uh, but you can see the color is just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, because it is the uh, Grand Sport from 06, it has a lot of special touches uh, that you're not going to see in, uh, in some of the earlier ones, like the uh, lower air dam on the bottom, uh, that is special to the Grand Sport. Uh, these incredible rocker fairings on the side, they almost look like running boards on a SUV, they're so wide. Uh, stunning, really attractive design. Love the big Maserati badge on the fender. Uh, it uses the, um, uh, what the hell do you, the Trident wheels that came off the, uh, right off the race car version of this. Uh, absolutely gorgeous. And the fellow who owned this wanted to space them out a little bit. So he used Formula Dynamic spacers with the appropriate lug nuts and uh, made it all uh, work well. You can see what that does is it pushes the uh, wheel and tire out to the side a bit more and uh, really fills out the lines nicely. <laughs> you can see it has very fresh Michelins on there, looking great. Uh, the car's always been indoors. Uh, you can see that immediately when you look behind the wheel into the brake. Look how shiny the red is on the caliper. There's no rust around the rotors. Uh, it is absolutely mint and lovely under there. Uh, ditto in the uh, other rear wheel. Just absolutely stunning. Uh, the lower uh, valence on the rear, that's also special to this Grand Sport model. Uh, the little lip spoiler on the back. Uh, very abrupt tail on this car. I mean, it's like a 90 degree angle from the back of the deck lid straight down. Very, very cool and uh, lovely design. And I love the little mesh stuff. Uh, there's the phone going off. The little mesh stuff on the side of that, uh, on the side of that diffuser. The four pipes out the back with chrome tips. Love the Maserati script on the back of the trunk. Uh, this was one of the first cars, maybe the first car to use LED tail lamps, so it's got that going for it. 
uh, but of course that was way back when. Uh, but anyway, outside the car is exactly what I would call mint, uh, with the exception of one touch-up right here. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, that is the only flaw that I can find on the whole exterior of the car. And uh, happily, I'm the guy who put it in it. <laughs> I was getting out of another car beside it. I don't even want to talk about it. Extraordinarily depressing. Uh, otherwise, it is the cleanest and nicest original paint you're likely to find on an 06 Maserati. Absolutely incredible. The clarity of the headlamps, fantastic. Uh, there's absolutely zero in the way of bug chips or wear in the front, uh, down to that bottom Formula One type spoiler, the mesh grill with the trident, absolutely gorgeous. Love it, love it. No stars in the windshield, anything like that. Uh, just uh, pure automotive perfection on the outside. Have a look inside the trunk. I'd forget my camera there, but otherwise you can see we've got a couple of Maserati floor mats. Those are the originals, came with it, very nice. Uh, I'll put in an Alpine radio. Uh, couldn't live with the strange Maserati Becker, but uh, he did keep it out and it does come with the car, which is quite nice. Let's see if I get that out for a minute. Go underneath here, show you what we got. There is the uh, original Maserati toolkit in this nice little compartment down there and uh, everything lovely inside the trunk. Everything is hard to do one-handed. Let's have a look under the hood. Uh, I'm losing everything, love of God. This isn't going any better than our usual videos. All right, the lashes are in my mouth. Open this up and have a look. All right, there is a gorgeous 4.2 liter uh, Ferrari derived engine. Variable valve timing, tuned runners on the intake, love the red valve covers. It is stunning, 392 horsepower, very smooth, and these things have proved to be pretty reliable. Uh, which usually the words Maserati and reliable don't go in the same sentence, but until someone proves me wrong, I have to say that these uh, GTs have been pretty impressive. Beautiful finishing in the engine bay, lovely trim around everything, uh, all completely immaculate and very well kept. Uh, just lovely under the hood of this car. Let's have a look inside. Okay, when we got this thing back from Al, uh, we realized we really didn't have too much in the way of documentation. So we brought it to uh, one of our local Maserati experts, a local shop called F1 Imports, and uh, a fantastic mechanic, Eric over there, uh, does a lot of work on high-end stuff, your Ferraris, Maseratis, Bentleys, you name it. Uh, if you're a well-to-do guy in Naples and you have an exotic car, then F1 is your shop. And we thought we would have him do a pre-purchase inspection uh, to give the car a baseline, which uh, we'll show you the results in the photos and <clears throat> talk a little bit about it. Uh, Eric also said anyone who's very serious about the car, he's happy to talk to him. <clears throat> you know, not some guy out there who wants to bid 200 bucks for it, but somebody who knows it's going to get up into the area that it's going to get up into. Uh, Eric will be happy to talk to you about the car. Uh, but anyway, you can see uh, one of the things Eric mentioned was that the interior of this car was far and away the best condition he'd seen in one of these Grand Sports. And, uh, or, you know, the GT, Gran Turismo, whatever, any of them. And I have to agree with him. It is absolutely, got the weed whackers. For the love of God, the weed whackers. <sighs> anyway. Uh, I have to agree with him. The interior of this car is just incredibly well preserved and gorgeous. Uh, the back seats, mint, lovely. Uh, they do actually manage to give some room back there, so uh, you can fit kids in without a problem. You know, big adults are probably going to be pretty crabby and miserable, but eh, if you're going to dinner, stuff them back there and what the hell. Uh, the beautiful leather headliner. Uh, you know, these cars did come with some a variety of weird interior colors, like silver and red. Uh, you get silver or red in one of these leather headliners, and it looks like you're either in an oven mitt or a Belgian bordello. So, 
Uh, black is probably the best color for this. Uh, they have lathered this car with rich, expensive leather and carbon fiber everywhere. Uh, you can see even those rear vents, which are shooting back at the passengers like cannons. Uh, they're made out of carbon fiber. <clears throat> the shell on the seat is lightweight, uh, trimmed in fantastically rich Italian leather. You've got carbon fiber in the door panel, more stitched leather covering everything. Uh, the leather work in this car is just astounding. Uh, very, very beautiful. Uh, you see it's got memory seats and heat here on the uh, driver's side. And well, let's hop in. Nice reprieve from the weed whacker. So to fire this thing up, and actually open the door again for that, you put the key in the ignition position. Let me get this door open. Uh, Maserati has little valves on the exhaust, so they open up when the car is in sport mode or it's over 4,000 RPM. They also open them for the start, which I think is a little bit of a kitschy feature, but I think it's also awesome because, uh, man, when this thing starts in a parking lot, you hear it. So, foot on the brake and listen to that thing just rumble to life. And now the valves close. Uh, absolutely gorgeous sound from this Maserati. Uh, you'll see the check engine light is going to cycle off. I don't know what it is with Maseratis, but they stay on longer than most other uh, cars. Then they go off. Uh, parking brake, let me get that off. And uh, here we are. Now you can see this beautiful leather wrapped and carbon fiber with the centering ring. Uh, sort of tall. Uh, oblong looking steering wheel, which is gorgeous. You've got magnesium shift battles that look like they came right off a of Formula One car uh, right behind it. Uh, you've got lovely blue faced gauges with chrome trim. Uh, you see just 21,000 miles on the clock of this thing. And uh, if you told me it had 1,000, I'd believe it based on the condition. It is just amazing inside and out. Our seat belt on. See our little display there says neutral. Uh, if you, I can't do it with the camera in my hand, but if you flip both paddles at the same time, uh, whatever gear you're in, the car will then go into neutral. So that's a nice feature. Uh, beautiful leather wrap on the dashboard. Gorgeous, no peeling, no discoloration, no disfiguring, uh, exactly the way it came. We're almost gonna have to vet who buys this car. If you have any intention of keeping it outside, um, yeah, it's gonna be a problem. <laughs> Al isn't gonna be very happy that it goes to a home like that. So got to make sure it goes indoors. Uh, interesting vents. I mean, they could be out of a Fiat Cinquecento from the 80s, but they work fine. They're easy to steer. You can close them. Eh, they almost look Mustang-ish. Uh, also a very basic looking climate control system. Uh, your fan, your direction, the con, whatnot. But again, works fine and not overly complicated. Uh, that's the uh, Alpine uh, that uh, Al put in. Very, very nice. Period correct. High end. Looks great and sounds great with the system and is infinitely better to use than that uh, that Becker. Uh, you can see here you've got your power windows, you've got your start button, you've got your hazards, you've got the sport, which if we put it into that, it instantly changes the tone of the exhaust as it opens it up. Uh, I believe this is, this is not the traction Maserati, something, what is that? Maybe it makes it leave in second gear. I forgot what that button did. In the last video I did, I forgot it as well, so I'm getting sloppy. Uh, back down into this beautiful carbon fiber uh, <clears throat> uh, shift uh, area here. Uh, you can see this tiny little T-shaped lever. Uh, that controls the Cambia Corsa transmission. Uh, Cambia Corsa, of course, being Italian for weird shift. Uh, oh, I'm kidding. Some people like it, some people don't. But once you get used to it, you kind of enjoy it. You can't help yourself. Uh, but anyway, to uh, put it in reverse, you lift the little handle and go back. And now you can see we're in reverse uh, to put it in drive. Uh, same thing, just lift and push forward, and now we're in first gear. Uh, this, the auto button, will make it shift automatically. Uh, you know, you still get the feel like you're shifting, uh, but it will shift for you. Uh, this will turn off the traction control. This is your rear defrost. This is your rear uh, fog light. You've got the mirror controls way back here where it's not at all convenient, but I guess you don't set them very often. And uh, you've got a 12 volt outlet. And you can see the mirrors do fold in as they should. 
there's Italian engineering for you. Uh, you have a very nice standard looking rear view mirror. I can see by the sensor it's auto dimming. Again, going into that beautiful headliner. And uh, over there you've got the Grand Sport script on the, uh, on the front of the glove box. And of course that beautiful Grand Sport script on the side ensconched in carbon fiber. But uh, anyway, let's go for a spin. So, you know, I'm going to put it in auto for the moment and let it shift itself. I'm going to also leave it in, uh, leave it in sport because we get that sound. Uh, running and driving, this is amongst the best Maseratis that I've been in. I mean, it is perfection. I will try not to hit this guy in the truck. Absolute perfection. Uh, if you look at the inspection report that we'll have the photos on, it's got about half the clutch left, uh, which, uh, you know, if you're the typical Maserati driver who puts about 2,000 miles a year on their car, that should last you a decade. Uh, if you use it a lot, <laughs> who knows? Oh, God, the sound of this thing. That is the beauty of driving a car like this. Uh, I mean, oh, and the, oh, the, God, the double clutch sound, the up oh, good lord, blipping the throttle for you. I mean, you wouldn't even need a radio. It's just a cacophony of the automotive symphonic heaven coming out the back of this car. Holds out the shifts nice in sport mode. God, what a lovely, lovely feeling. Uh, great brakes in this thing, no vibrate. Listen to that, listen to it, downshift. Uh, and that's so much fun to do with the paddles as well. And I'll tell you what, despite what people will say, some people really hate this Cambia Corsa and want to have a manual. You know, I get it. I mean, even though it is a manual, but there is a loveliness to it as well, and particularly a loveliness when you master it, when you're flipping the paddles, when you're downshifting. Uh, a friend of mine took a Cambia Corsa car in Sebring, uh, the racetrack, and he said he had more fun uh, paddle shifting than he does in his uh, you know, car with the manual. So uh, there is a certain joy to it, which is probably why it's you know in every F1 car you can imagine. Uh, but anyway, the way this thing runs and drives is just exceptional. I wish we'd get past this red light so I could give you another little taste of it. I'm telling you, we feel just sitting in these incredibly supportive sport seats, seeing the carbon fiber wheel in front of you with the centering ring, uh, the beautiful perforated leather on the sides, the Maserati trident staring at you, the prerequisite analog cock with the trident in it. Uh, you can just tell you're in something special. And these cars are such a bargain in the exotic world. Does it hold out the shifts nice and sport? Listen to this thing. Oh my God, what a lovely, lovely sound. What a nice drive. And that's the thing, an automatic, you can just take it to the grocery store, you know, enjoy yourself, go get some shrimp cocktail, and still feel like a million bucks without stressing too hard. And uh, the thing can be bought for, you know, the price of a mid-level Honda Accord. It's just incredible. What a sports car bargain. What an exotic bargain. Just beautiful to drive. And if we get out of sport, it's gonna shift a little bit more sedately. Noise is gonna back off because it closes the valves and now you're just a ho-hum citizen on your way to the workaday world. Uh, the suspension is Skyhook, uh, very interesting. Uh, setup that keeps the car firmly planted front back uh, you know very fam famously used in your Bentleys and uh, your you know other high-end cars and keep them very nicely planted on the pavement anyway there it is so this is a 2006 Maserati Grand Sport this was a special video for my friend Al who uh, ah, he's a nice guy nice enough anyway uh, you wouldn't mind buying a car from Al. He's a good cat. And uh, this was for Bring a Trailer so people could get a feel for what this Maserati is like. Uh, thank you so much for having a look. We really appreciate it. Bit early and often. And you're going to get the nicest Maserati you can imagine. Uh, this thing is head and shoulders above the rest. Thanks for having a look and take care.